live from Bridge Nine Records in Beverly, Massachusetts. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. What's up, everybody around the world? Here we are in Massachusetts at Bridge Nine, where we played last night. I never left. I slept on the drum riser, interestingly enough. What's going on? Good to see everybody. The gang's all here. I missed you. It's been a while. Like a week and a half. A lot going on. I hope everybody's well. I hope things are well in your world. Third location ever? Um, where, no, we did, the sh we did the show from A7 once. No, my dad's, the command center where I usually do it. I think we did it from A7 once. That was that I vowed never again. But but this was this was set up for me really nice. Oh, you made it home okay? Lori Dawn was here last night. Yeah. We walked around in Salem last night. So so there you go. Uh, the show, let you know what? The show was great. We'll, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Um, thank you. What's your deal? Live from New York. Live? Where, where are you, in Times Square? No, I'm, uh, I'm on uh, 33rd, 34th, whatever it is. What are I'm, you doing uh, down there? Well, I came into the city for a little bit, and I'm going to go into uh, Queens, and then we're going to go to Starland Ballroom for Hate Breed and Terror and Vane. Wow. So, uh, but uh, I, uh, I'm sad that I missed the show. I, I was going to ask you how the show was. You know, the show was uh, good. How was, uh, how was H2O? Well, here, I got a couple of pictures. Let's see it. Let's see it. This, this, I'll, I'll lead off, I'll lead off with this one, which is kind of a, a bit of a recap, right? Check nice. Out, you know? So it's uh, me and Toby. Uh, it was uh, H2O, an incendiary device, playing in, our, in, in the Bridge Nine warehouse. So... Uh, it was great. Let me show you. I got a couple of pictures. There's that. Let me see if there's is there. Well, this is this is what it looked like when H2O was playing, which was pretty cool. Check that out. Oh, yeah. nice. And these photos are uh, courtesy of Return Return to the Pit. Oh, nice. So, yeah. It basically, um, basically. I'm sitting in the, you see one view, I'll give you the other view of where I'm at, just to give you some perspective. So, there, there it is. is, look at that, nice. Yeah, so they set, they set me up, you know, they set me up with a table and Larry Kelly hooked it up and him and, him and Rochelle are, uh, in Salem Look, right now. Larry so. actually helped build that place, right? The new, the new, the new place. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. The wolf, the, wolf, the wolf is everywhere. Listen, we are everywhere. That's it. You know, in fact, it was good to see him. I know we didn't really get a chance to touch on it, but it was good to see Larry and everybody at the Dick Dynamite premiere the other night too. That was a blast. Yeah. yeah. And there's always something going on, you know, it really is. And uh, it was good. I have to ask, how did Phil do? Here's a shot of Phil. Phil held it down. Here's a shot of uh, of Phil playing with us right nice. here. Nice. Yeah, he's he's another beast. You know, we got a lot of good drummers in our group. Yeah, this is. You know, it was cool. You know, for us. I mean, you know, we're just getting off the launch pad. Our record's not out yet. You know, we had a nice, enthusiastic response. You know, um, but you know, people people were here to see. Uh, H2O and they've been around a long time and they have, you know, really a uh, uh, enthusiastic fan base, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure they do. And it's well-deserved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, and yeah. I see you. I see the RBNX guys fucking laughing. There they are. <laughs> That's cool that they were there to support what are you their, guys their laughing crew, at? you know? We're well, looking at Mike. Look, we're looking look at me up in the back corner in the fucking picture in the fucking blue Mets shirt. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> These guys are nothing but trouble. Yeah, you know we'll deal with, <laughs> we'll deal with you guys later. Um, oh man, 
here's a cool shot of uh, both of the bands together at the uh, sort of at the end of the night with Larry and Chris uh, that's Ben. A, that's a yeah. great shot with the with the with the logo behind it. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, you know what's you know what's cool? Matt Henderson plays guitar for um, for Rusty. No, Rusty was there. Matt, oh, he was there. Oh, good. No, Matt Hen Matt Wildcard Henderson, who was agno who was in Agnostic Front and Madball, plays because Toby's brother now is in Offspring. Yes, yes, that's right. I saw Matt at the LPR. He played with them. Yeah, he's that was that's right. Uh, uh, Todd Morse has been with the Offspring for a while now. That's right. And you know who was fucking killer is Toby Morse's son, teenage Maximus. son, plays drums and he's really good. Yeah, well, he's he's. If you ever see some of his videos, he could play like the really heavy, like death metal stuff too. He's he's a, he's a powerhouse. He's I was impressed, man. He was he was really good. Here's another. Uh, here's a shot. Yeah. That's yep. awesome. Yep, it was cool, man. As That's, you can see, as you can see, I haven't left. I like it so much here. I'm just gonna stay here forever. Forever. Yeah. Uh oh, we're gonna have to change the name to the Massachusetts uh, Chronicles. Just, just come here and bring like you know. <laughs> I'll bring you some pizza and bagels. Here's a shot of us playing. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, oh, you, Sean was on that side. Sean was on that side. Yeah, he's usually not on that side. It's true. Huh. I didn't. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's weird. I guess that's the way they had it set up. Hmm. Interesting. Knew, you know what? I knew something didn't feel right. <laughs> Motherfuckers. You know? That's it. That's awesome. They fucked me, man. I uh, knew that's something. A... <laughs> you know, I knew something. Here's another one. I knew something, you know. Ah, uh, you got some nice shots. Yeah. yeah. Look how happy you are, too. You know what? Do, do you have to me, leave New York to smile? Let me tell you something. Happiness is fleeting, Okay. So don't waste your time with it. <laughs> no, That's of course, awesome. I have my moments where I'm happy. That's awesome. I saw you smile last Sunday at the Bowery. I saw you <laughs> smile. Yeah. So there you, know, you go. That's awesome. Well, here's, you know the what? here's the last one of, uh, of us playing. Listen, you know what? Let's be frank. You know, let me tell you something. Okay, Frank. <laughs> I don't like playing anywhere outside the New York City subway system. Anything beyond that is a bit stressful. <laughs> Listen, I'm, oh. if I, I'm kind of the same way. If I can't get to it by train, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ah, oh, nice. That's where everybody's having fun there. Yeah, it was a That's great night. Awesome. It was a great night. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So that's it, man. I want to. Uh, I want to take a minute. It is Sunday, and I mm -hmm. want to shout out Ray Hogan because Ray and I lost a uh, lost a friend this week. We lost a man named Matt Vinci, who played bass in the band Liege Lord. Oh, who, uh, I, I, I actually, big metal band from the 80s that was still going strong. Yeah, yeah. And I was just in Greece with them, with Hitman back in 2019. And uh, they were actually much closer with Ray. He's, you know, they're his, from around by him. And uh, he passed the day I was literally burying a friend that passed two day, uh, a week before. So... It's been kind of a rough week, but hard to hear that. These shows are that much more important because of stuff like this, you know, that we can all gather with our friends and 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 let out this kind of energy. So, I actually gave up my Gorilla Biscuits ticket to Matt to uh, Will Romeo because I was at a wake that day. So, the um, I missed the biscuits. They did two nights in uh, Brooklyn. Yep. But. Uh, you know what? This is awesome, and uh, I I gotta say I love the video. I love that f that false fed video. Yo, I like that video a lot oh. too, man. It reminds I, I, actually, it reminds me of the limelight. It reminds me of the sound of the limelight, that goth sound, you know. Well, you you know it remind I, I I I like it so much. I mean, I actually like it, and yeah. like for the most part, I think everything sucks. That's you true. Know? He does. He you does know, even think when that. I, listen, even when I have you motherfuckers on the show, I think the shit sucks. But I'm like, hey, I love your shit. But really, he thinks we suck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It all sucks. <laughs> God damn it, it all sucks. Oh my God. Uh, listen, 
I, I really, really, I love that. I love that track. And, and me like, too. It sticks in my head. That, that's why I wanted to get these guys on, you know, and, and talk about it. So that said, let me get the show on the road. Let me get, get rolling. And I will tell Jamie and the crew you said hello. And uh, I will see you guys later. All right. Take care. All right. There you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics. New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, Upstate Records, and 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They are about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Come on now, Upstate Records. They're a New York-based DIY independent metal and hardcore label. Founded in the year of our God, 2017, they broke into the scene with their inaugural 26-band compilation and since then have churned out. They churned out. I'm, chur oh, yo, I'm churning it out. Why would you want to churn? What do you churn? You churn, you churn butter. You don't churn out records. I'm, ch yo, I'm churning them out. They've churned out over 80 releases in their brief five-year history. Out now are new releases by Mark Rizzo's band Revenge Beast, Carl from Earth Crisis is Friar, Fury of Five, Angry Corpses, and a few more surprises in the works. Check them out. Whole lot more. www.upstaterecordsnewyork.com and use the code STONE10 for 10% off. You cheap fuck. That said, let's bring our first guest on. Let's clear the deck. Here we go. Let's bring on a friend and supporter. He's an American drummer with a rich, vibrant history. He's known for his work with the bands Nausea, Thorn, Crisis, Soulfly, Stone Sour, Hell Yeah, Channel Zero, and many, many others. Coming at us from Connecticut, where he is currently on tour with Ministry, here today to talk about his new project, False Fed. Please welcome Roy Mayorga. Brother! Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know you don't think we suck. That's great. <laughs> I, I, I fucking, I Thank love you. it, man. I love it a lot. I really do. No, he works pretty hard on that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, really happy how it came out. Um, I gotta say, uh, how it came together, it was completely, uh, came together through the pandemic. Tell us about it. Well, I was approached by Stig with a bunch of songs that he uh, had put together. Like, it's just really bare bones, like like four complete songs he had. It was just guitars and, you know, really like simple program drum machine and a click track. And he basically said, hey, man, I'd love for you to play on this stuff. You know, have at it. See what you think. Um, I went to town on it and then I sent him back the drums. He re-recorded his guitar over it and then got Jonathan on bass and you got JJ from Discharge on it and then this thing just exploded and it just kept going on and on. We've worked on it for a really long time. Um, a lot of back and forth. I mean, it's the first time I've made a record like that. Anyway, ex ex we, explain, explain who's in the band. And so, explain oh, who's so, I'm sorry. Who's yeah. in the band, who are they, and what they're, and like sort of where they're coming from. I know, sorry, they're just coming out the gates like that without any explanation. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm excited. That's why. You know what I mean? It's okay. Um, it's JJ, the singer for now, singer for Discharge, uh, Stig from Amoebix, and Jonathan Parsons, a friend there of theirs. Is. Great bass player. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, we haven't all have not been in the same room together yet. Really? You know yeah. what I mean? Which is bizarre. I mean, Stig and I have known each other for years, but and by chance, I met up with JJ last year when I was with uh, Ministry at Hellfest. Rents. We just happened to be both staying in the same uh, hotel when he was there with Discharge. So that was that was cool. So we finally got to meet each other there. But Jonathan, the bass player, JP, never, we never met each other face-to-face -face yet. Wow. We've all been communicating via Zoom this whole time, making this record. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a blast. It's been great. Um, and and, and how, how many tracks did you record for the record? Six. Yeah, six tracks. Is, is this Basically, a band... Go ahead. So basically, once we were all finished with recording, they sent me all their tracks. I put it all together, and then uh, I mixed it at my house and then sent it off to get mastered, and here we are. 
Yeah, yes, Philip. It's false, false fed, and that, and false that's fed. yeah. And uh, I love it. Go check it out. And the, and Thanks, and, uh, and you just released the second video, right? Yeah, time it dies. Is is this is this a band that is gonna like play play out live? I uh, hopefully. I mean, I hope yeah. we can. I mean, like between like my schedule and and JJ's, you know, it's gonna right. be kind of tough. We're trying to find a way to at least have a couple shows, play a couple shows. I'd love to like at least start off in England where those guys are at. That's been kind of like the rough talk right now. It's like maybe get something going on over there, play a yeah. couple shows and see what happens there. I know, um, I know JJ yeah. is really, really uh, stoked on it. He's really, I'm, I'm really happy for him, man. You know, it's like something a little bit different than the discharge thing for him. And I know he's yeah. wanted to do something like this for a long time, you know? Yeah, me as well. I mean, it, it, I've been wanting to work with Stig again for a while too, since like right. we had our thing with Amoebics, right. uh, that that stopped unfortunately. And then this is kind of cool how we just picked up from where we left off, and we work great together. You know, even like miles, and thousands of miles away from each other, and through the interweb, <laughs> we could still make some music. You know, so I'm really thankful for the technology that we can do stuff like this. Hey, look who says hello, Keith Burkhart from Cause for Alarm. Hey! How about that, huh? What's wow. up? What's up, Roy? Been a minute. Roy played the guitar solo on Summer on Avenue A. I did. Danny, Dan, Danny M doesn't do solos. This was the double seven inch we recorded called Birth After Birth. Roy also recorded it for us. <laughs> That's crazy. I did. That's when I was uh, when I was sort of living in Phoenix when I was with Soulfly for the first time. And right. that was like actually the last time I saw Keith. Keith, man, great to see you, brother. Yeah. Man, it's been a long time, man. I haven't that, seen him in ages. Yeah, it's wow. great. And also checking in, Ryan Bland says, False Fed sounds dope, Roy. Miss you, bro. I miss you too, Ryan. Man. Yeah. Love it. I love Good. Ryan. He's the best. Yeah, yeah. See? They, they, they... And, and, you are on the ministry tour right now with with Rob Zombie and and Alice Cooper, right? Yep, yep. We've been out we've been out together now for two weeks. We got uh, two more weeks left. Mm -hmm. It's been great. The Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie camp have been great, man. They've just been really treating us good and and uh, showing us a great time. And it's been it's really awesome, man. Doesn't Everyone our friend doesn't together. our friend Lawrence and fil um, and filter and filter. Ah, I think doesn't our friend Lawrence. Uh, TM for Rob Zombie? He is. He's been hanging out with him the whole time. You know, yeah. he manages sick of it all. I know. I know. Yeah. It was it was so weird. Like it, it was just a small world. I had no idea he was doing this. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like literally like, days before we went on the road, he he messages me like, Hey man, I'm gonna see you for a few weeks. I'm like, no way. It's so cool. And I haven't seen Lawrence in like a very long time, so it was really cool reconnecting with him. Yeah, hey, not to guy. not not to veer off the subject matter, but did I see this on your Instagram today? Man, come let me on tell now. You something about come this. On, come I'm, on now. I'm, What's up? I'm still freaking out about this. Dude, Peter Chris, like, he is the reason why I do what I do now. Wow. Like, seven years old, I found Kiss. Uh, I saw them on Don Kirsch's rock concert late at night. My <laughs> brother woke me up for that. Oh, I, yeah. got, I bought Rock and Roll Over and Kiss Alive, and that was it. You know, I wanted to be like this guy. And then, you know, figured out how to play drums, found a drum teacher, yada, yada, rest is history. So I finally get to meet this guy. Actually, Lawrence is the one that introduced me to Peter because Peter was backstage and I just couldn't believe that this guy was there. And he was the most coolest just gentleman, man. Like, like totally just down to earth. Like him and I were just talking like, like you and I are talking. Yeah. It was like, I knew this guy for years. It, it was great. We talked for like 20 minutes and he was telling me about his new record he made. And I was, I was talking to him about like the footage that I saw him playing in this big band jazz orchestra doing like Gene Krupa stuff. So we we're going off about that and sure. just shooting the shit. And he was, he was a beautiful guy, man. He's great. It was really cool to meet someone you looked up to as a kid and that started you. I, I even told him, look, I know a million people tell you this all the time, but I got to tell you because of you is what I, this is why I'm, I'm doing this because, you know, because of you, this is all because of you. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, you, you, you know, he, it, he, he let me have the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we, say, we, say, we say it a lot. There's like a few like gateways. Like it's like a gateway drug. Like hardcore is like a gateway drug. And Kiss, and kiss is like a gate. Like a lot of people come through the portal of Kiss. On of the Kiss, way to, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, on the way uh, 
on the way to playing. Uh, yeah, Kiss was uh, the portal that led me to the other portal of, of uh, the punk portal, which would have been the Ramones, which was, yeah, right. that's it. Yeah. Kiss and Ramones, um, hand in absolutely. hand. Absolutely. Where, where, where is the, the false fed uh, material available? How can people get it? Uh, New Rot Records. New Rock mm -hmm. Recordings. You can you could get it from them. It's streaming on Apple. It's 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 you can get it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Let me just this. It'll be out officially in October. Right. Um. Where where was it? Gosh, this is great, man. I love this video. That was recorded. I'm not sure where that was recorded. I think that was somewhere in the Midlands. I wasn't there for that. But you were. But you turn up later on. Well, here's the thing. We all recorded our parts separately and then sent it to our, 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 our the video editor and he put it all together. Like That's I put great. a black screen behind me in my room and just played to the song like with my in-ears in and then they, they assembled it. So we've never even been to the, we've never been in the same room together ever. Right. Still <laughs> by this point. It's it's gonna be amazing, like when we all get together in a room and actually play this stuff live. I can't wait. You know, it's gonna be cool. Oh, through the magic of technology, you know? <laughs> well, great. And uh, one la let me see what else. I got the, you guys, you guys got it. You guys got it rolling. You guys got the, I like the red, the, the red logo, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Red and black. Good. Good stuff. Simple look. Simple logo, man. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, Tom Wilson asks, any LP CD for the new False Fed False Fed release? Yeah, it's coming out on October yeah. 3rd. October 13th. Yeah. There you have it. Yep. And Thanks. Streaming bro. everywhere. Streaming everywhere. Everywhere. Good. <laughs> well, listen, man, I'd say have a good time out there, but I know you're having a great time, man. I'm and, having the and, best. I'm having that time of my life, man. I really you, am. You deserve it, Roy. You really do. Appreciate it, man. I mean that. I'll talk to you soon. Anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to thank? Just, I love you, all of New York. <laughs> New York That's loves it. you. I'll talk to That's you later, it. Roy. All right, man. Bye. Be good, Take brother. Care. All right, bye. Late. Well, there you have it. That was cool. Roy Mayorga. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, next up, next up in the cavalcade. In, in our cavalcade of stars. Um, want to talk to you guys about this book. This is a book called Brooklyn Hardcore. It is written by Eddie McNamara, and he is our next guest. Brother! Hello. What's up? Thank How you for you? having me. I am awesome. Thank you for having me. My, so excited to be here. And you're down in Atlantic City. Yeah, I'm, I'm trapped here after the dancing show last night. Uh, our bus canceled. And uh, so, yeah, here I am in the hotel in Atlantic City. How was you know, Danzig? Danzig was great. Um, he did the whole first record and probably another 30 minutes of stuff from the second and third record. Just just okay. awesome set. And, uh, and my old friend Tommy Victor, a friend and supporter of the show, was playing guitar, right? Oh, yeah, he was, like, attacking it. It was great because, um, you know, you have those really bluesy parts on the first record. And the yeah. way Tommy was playing it, he was, like, playing it, like, really riffy and really aggressive and it was yeah you know it was fantastic i uh well, well tom tommy is a, a really different kind of guitar player than john christ yeah totally. you know they're really really different different guitar players you know but he nailed it he was like he made yeah. it his own yeah it was great that's cool that's cool let's talk about brooklyn hardcore let's do it and, and um you know uh before we kind of get into into the well well but, We'll get into this. We'll get into the. You know what? Maybe this is what I'm going to do. Sure. This is how I'm going to. This is. This is how. I'm going to read you guys. The back of the book. Uh, th this. This kind of. This is the. Uh, this kind of lays it all out, and um, this will set the table. Okay. Brooklyn hardcore. Eddie McNamara. In 1994, Brooklyn, Jimmy Quinn sat at the top of the street kid food chain. As a promising Golden Gloves boxer and member of the Graveyard Stompers, New York City's most no notorious hardcore punk crew, crew, Quinny forged his own future with determination and shaped it with his fists. Like the streets he came up in, 
The soundtrack to his life was loud, fast, and brutal. But with his best friend, skinhead Carlos, girlfriend Justi Justine Obscene, I love that, Justine Obscene, and the boys by his side, he was ready to make fate his bitch. But fate is nobody's bitch. One unlucky punch, one Nazi skinhead who never got back up. The life Quinny had built from junkyard scraps disappeared in an instant. After two decades in prison, Quinny returns to a different Brooklyn. The gang is gone. Hipsters have replaced punk, uh, street punks, and his dream of becoming a pro fighter is as dead as the bonehead who put him here. Or is it? His fists make collection money for local mobster and his best, uh, is his best option, but, o but only until he can parlay his killer reputation into a six-figure pro boxing debut. Can he crawl his way back up in time, will, or will he be just another victim that said did i get did i get that right yeah i mean i didn't write it but um yeah the, who, whoever wrote it for my publisher uh yeah you know that yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely. um it was a quick read it, it was it, it was it, it was an easy read thankfully T tell us about your background and and how, how did how did how did the book come about you know what, what what inspired you to write okay um well my background is i grew up in brooklyn um born and raised in brooklyn um, I played in some bands. I played in an early version of Shutdown. I played in this band Purge. I played in a band with Matt Bold, um, After Bold. It was uh, sort of a short, uh, it was in Dure. It didn't really go anywhere. Um, and uh, I've always wanted to be a writer. Um, in, the, in the 90s, myself and Justin Brannon from Indecision, we did a... Uh, councilman Brannon. Uh, me, and, me and the councilman, we did a... <laughs> We did a fanzine called um, Extreme Zine with an X um, because we felt like in the early 90s, like Brooklyn bands, like Brooklyn was like its own world back then. Yeah. Um, and it was like really, I think, cut off from the rest of the city. So we did a zine that really sort of focused on third generation New York hardcore bands, but from Brooklyn. So it sure. would be like, um, you know, sort of Confusion, Dark Side, Marauder. Mar Marauder. Um, and then, like, even some of the, you know, Indecision, My Old Band Purge, um, you know, uh, there was all these, bands, this band Backslap, there were, like, all these bands happening, and they really just played, for the most part, in Brooklyn, like, like shows at L'Amour, or shows at the Crazy Country Club, and, um, you know, there was really no CBs happening uh, back then, so but, it was like... But, like you said, Brooklyn was a world onto itself back then, and it had, like you had multiple clubs yeah. and like it was like very vibrant and and actually just to interject the new book that i have coming out is the 90s and they talk about like the, the crazy country club and and all those kind of places there was a lot going on in brooklyn and a lot of a lot of bands coming up yeah it was like it was a it was like a full ecosystem like it was like almost like you know um you know there's like different people like say like uh, if you went to a show at wetlands yeah. You wouldn't like there'd be people at Lamore shows, and probably two thirds of them would never cross the bridge or tunnel into the sure. city. Sure. And uh, so you would have like it was just this wild, like sort of you know, it was it was a different vibe. Like you'd go to like say the Wetlands and or uh, Bond Street Cafe, they were doing shows then, and shows would be you know what you would imagine a hardcore show would be. But in Brooklyn, there's like a third of the crowd mm. that was they didn't get there from punk. And they didn't get there from metal. They mm. got there because of violence. And there right. was like there were like these insane psycho kids who would just you know show up at um, you know shows and just just to cause uh, havoc. And uh, I think uh, that stuck with me. You know, like some of the things I remembered from being like 14, 15 years old. And and I was like I was a herb. I was just like a nice kid. Like I, I played in bands. I wasn't like I wasn't a tough guy or anything like that. You, but, you weren't. You weren't. You weren't a violent. Uh, oh okay. god no no i was like i was like a super nice kid and i wanted to be a writer and you know like get good grades i mean so um you know but but you would see these people or be friends with these people and but you uh, know what but you know what you're the guy that documented this thing right exactly and and I, those I, guys and those guys most of them are long gone well yeah absolutely which is and and yeah. and, 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 and and you you know don't sell yourself short. You had the perspective, you know, and, and, and to, to document it. You know, it's it's 
and what made me do it really was um, I went to, um, well, the book and the movie, The Wanderers. I, uh, I love, you know, Richard Price, I love him. And I went Is to that see right? Him. Yeah. And I went to see him, uh, I went to see him speak. And he was talking about looking out his window in the Bronx. And that's where he got his stories from. So I was like, well, I, ha I haven't seen The Wanderers in many, many years. Maybe I should revisit that. Yeah, it's, it, it's you should, the book is fantastic. And I really think the movie is like super underrated. Because sure. it came out, it came out the same time as the Warriors. Ken Wall, Ken Wall. Ken Wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And it's and it's like so. I thought, you know, why don't I write about you know dudes I came up with, like dudes in like South Brooklyn who are just you right. know, sort of like similar to the people in 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 this book. And um, you know, I felt like, and people are like feeling a little bit represented, which is really cool. Like I'm getting like uh. You know, I'm getting emails from people from, you know, from Brooklyn, but from all over, like, you know, from, you know, people in the UK, people uh, in other states. And they're, you know, just like the early 90s being like a really turbulent time. And they're really relating to that. And, uh, you know, I mentioned it in the book. There were, in 1992, I think there were like 2,400 murders in New York City. And there were 400 last year. And people in the city are just like, well, crime's out of control. But like, you know, if you remember back, you know, when it was, it really kind of was out of control. Interesting, interestingly enough, um, somebody I'm, I, I'm doing a biohazard documentary right oh, now. Cool. And, and I interviewed um, a couple of people, including Danny Diablo, Isaac. Right. And he said back then, part of the thrill of the whole thing was going to a show like that. And it was fucking survival. It was violent. And just the, the sort of the um, you're in survival mode. I mean, I think that's what got me hooked. And I think, you know, in, in, in my book, um, you know, the young protagonist, that's what gets him hooked on shows is just how, um, you know, how, in, how insane, you know, things were back then. Like, it was so, like, yeah, just like, you know, it's it just, you, you couldn't believe it. And I think in, in a way, like, people would hear stories from the 80s and they would hear, like, maybe crazy stories and they would try to one-up it. They would try to make it even... Yeah, be be more psychotic, be more antisocial, and uh, you would just see these like you know insane things that you know like um, something I mentioned in the book. Somebody really did. I was at a show at Lemoore, a body count show, and two guys were fighting, and someone threw a hatchet, um, and the hatchet whizzed right by me, and I'm like 14 years old, and uh, I was just like, this is the coolest fucking thing in the world. Like threw a hatchet, a hatchet, yeah, dude threw a hatchet. It was it was that happened, real life. At, at Biohazard and DRI at Lemoore. Yeah, do it. You know, th those, those shows were incredibly violent and wild. And, and not, to go, not, to get back to bi not to get back to Biohazard, but it comes up in the film I'm doing. They say that, like, Biohazard was the excuse for a lot of people to converge to settle their scores. No, I mean, like, and you can't have Brooklyn Hardcore without mentioning Biohazard. Yeah. And that's like, you know, they... They were like on a whole other level, even yeah. like in like you know ninety. Um, yeah, and it's it's totally true because the biohazard crowd, yeah, you know, it's not the same crowd. Again, like we were saying, like it's not the same crowd that you're going to see at like a Veil and Indecision at Wetlands. Right. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's definitely going to be you know some different people with different agendas do that you are going to be at that show. Do you feel in any level that you're, you're sort of glorifying that a lot of, a lot of people look at this era? And the violence and like, say, that's when I checked out of hardcore. That's when sure. I wanted nothing to, that's when I had enough. It was just, it was violence, violence. That's not what it's about. That's when I walked away from it. Do you feel like to a certain extent, you're sort of glorifying that or, 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 or nostalgia or, 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 or turning it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nostalgia, you know, turning it into like a, a nostalgic thing. Yeah, I think, I think. I think I address nostalgia. I think I really, um, and I think I'm, I'm, this is something I'm really serious about is like, you know, it, it's easy to have the conversation like, oh yeah, back in the day, things were crazy. But yeah. like, um, you know, I wanted to show consequences. I wanted to sure. show that, sure. um, you know, the characters had, you know, uh, their lives were uh, altered by these, uh, you know, by stuff they thought was just, you know, part of going to shows and acting out. Uh, so well, I, I, well, 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 bad, bad, bad decisions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I yeah. definitely don't want, yeah, I definitely don't, um, like, I kind of, like, I, I, you know, in, in some ways I wish I was 16 now because the kids are really cool, shows are really fun, people are yeah. super nice, you know, it's, uh, 
in some ways it's uh it's it's completely different and um and i i like it you know um so that that you know i i like it better now you know i think it's 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 a it's a better experience i chose i mean in, in, in some ways you know like yeah, uh, yeah for sure like, like you know but uh yeah i definitely don't think glorifying i think i think the opposite like to, to, to show you know in a way like you know maybe make it look attractive a little bit but then it's really not the you know it's it's, it's the wrong way to go with it i think was were many of the characters based on real people and real you know like Maybe the na the names have been changed to 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 protect the innocent, yeah. but but are the the are the majority of the characters or or based on like people you personally knew or or maybe recognized from across the room? Yeah, it's 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 a I would say um, some of the characters are an amalgam of people. Like if, yeah. if I if I name someone uh, in real life, um, it's because they were doing something good. You know, right. they were like contributing to you know putting on shows and they were doing great things. But the other people, uh, yeah, it's maybe like three or four people put into one character. Um, but it's, you know, I think, you know, it, it, for people who were around back then, I think they do, in a way, recognize it. Some people recognize themselves in, in, in the character, which is kind of funny. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, they, I, I, I recognize like a couple of, you know, a couple of the, the violent Brooklyn characters sort of like, like you know, um, uh, morphed into one, you know? Yeah. I think that's really that's what I did, yeah. and um, it's interesting because those guys um, that you know, some of them have contacted me, and they're like, "Oh, I, I caught that," and uh, you know, it's uh, that's me, right? You know, and I'm yeah, right, like, well, you know, I'm, <laughs> right. You know, I'm trying to get in trouble, you know, like. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, interestingly I, uh, enough, I've uh, when I was directing the New York Hardcore Chronicles film, uh, originally a, a lot of um, segments were sketched out, right? Because at first. Um, I was thinking it was going to be a bit of a bit of an it was going to be a multi a multi, uh, a multi um, episode series. Right. So I broke it down into a bunch of different episodes. And there was an episode called The Age of Violence, which really dealt with that time in the 90s um, when things were, you know, got really violent. And, you know, another place I know it was in Brooklyn was like Castle Heights. AKA castle fights. Yeah. You know, there, there was, it, there was, it was, it was a, it was a really, it was a really violent time and, and you'd go out and, and I, 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 I said this, I don't know if I agree with this anymore. Cause for a while I was saying, well, we uh, just, just my comment on sort of the atmosphere uh, uh, now at shows, I right. was like, well, at least everyone's not trying to be hard these days. Cause back then you'd go out and, Everybody was yeah. fucking. That was the thing. Everybody was wearing the fucking the fucking sports jersey and was mad. It was just everybody was a tough guy, yep. and it got fucking old, Very you know. Cool. But now the pendulum has swung so far in the other direction. It's sort of like, what is this? Yeah, you know? yeah. It's it's. I mean, and I think like I even like think there's like a year where things changed. Like 1995, I think, yeah. is the moment where like. Sure um yeah. things go from like the negative 90s to like you know now you're starting to get more straight edge bands more positive bands uh you know long island bands are uh you know uh like they're having these really great shows like you know it's like 2000 kids on long island and they're really everyone's nice and you know pretty chill and like but um yes yeah, so i think 95 but i i you know it's it's uh yeah so it's it's a weird mix because like you know going to going to a show then being like 14 years old it's almost like uh uh you know like a haunted house like you go to like a you know go to like a marauder show when you're 14 years old and it yeah. was like you know it's almost like the same thing it's the same reason why you go there like you go in there like to see a horror movie like something crazy is gonna happen it's gonna be scary well you know what they say youth is wasted on the young right yeah and and, and it's like you know when you're when you're young like that it's just an incredible adventure and and and, and i'm speaking for a lot of people out there you know um i, I know you know dominic you know, uh, from Brooklyn and, 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 and Hags and even Darren Diggle. It's like, you know, we were all out there as, as very young people. And it was just, it was incredibly exciting when you're that, when you're, you know, when, when you're that young, when you get a little older, it's like, eh, Oops, enough already. Yeah. But, but Darren says, one thing I don't get now is why do people go to see live music and just stand there with their phones and just look at the show through their phones? Because that's the world we live in now, brother. That that's just that's just the temperament of the culture. 
I mean, that's just, you know, that it, that's, that's what it is, man. You know? Yeah. It's like, I don't even understand why these people are they're filming all these shows. Like when are they going to watch all this footage? You know, like yeah. somebody, you know, like every time I go to a show, somebody's filming like half a set. Like, what are you going to do with that? Watch it again. You, go, you, know? you know, it's, fu it's, it's funny because we just played last night and, and I saw some, I saw a couple of pictures and it's all photographers and it just made me want to go, you know what? Next time we fucking play, I want to go like, you know what? No fucking pictures. Get the fuck off the stage. And yeah. like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see another fucking picture of myself. Fucking, uh, it's like enough. For, you know what? Let's fuck. Everybody put your fucking phone down and let's enjoy the show. That'd be great. Like being in the moment, like being in the moment would be fantastic. Who cares? That... You think you need another fucking, you want to see my stupid fucking face? Watch this show. <laughs> You know, I like it. I like, uh, yeah. You know what? I just might be that dick. Chris Contos uh, from uh, Forbidden these days. Ruthie's in out here in the Bay Area was really violent in the 80s. We did not have the tough guy vibe. It was just violence propelled by the music. Well, well, of course, Chris being one of the pioneers and spearhead of that of the, th the Bay Area thrash thing, which was, you know. Similar but different, you know. Great. I mean, I, and I think also like a lot of the the Brooklyn stuff that came uh, came out of thrash. I think or crossover. You know, right. I think that was where yeah. the uh, you know sort of like the you know like the Lamar Lamar is a metal club really, and even like uh, you know Castle Heights was almost a metal club. You know, like so it's it's you know yeah. I think a lot of it came from thrash, and then like sure. I think people thought hardcore was just very heavy metal. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, you know. Um, a story of Lou. Okay, Maynard. It, that I guess is that is that what um, Maynard from Tool doesn't let anyone take pictures, right? Is that it? <laughs> I'm gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna be like anyone who pulls their fucking phone out next time. Any, you know, next time you pull a fucking phone out at our show or a fucking camera, you're gonna get like you're gonna get like jumped in, jumped in like a like like gang, and you're gonna get fucking trashed. No more fucking pictures at our shows. Where's Steven Messina? <laughs> Tell Steven Messina no more fucking pictures. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> th th thank you, bro. <laughs> you've, ins you've inspired me to, to be the most hated man in music. Excellent, excellent. You know what? <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. You thought Glenn Danzig was a dick and, and, and Maynard? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that said... Um, tell us uh, well, Tell us where the book can be uh, purchased. Sure, it's... Um... It's on. You can get it on Amazon, Amazon UK, um, Barnes and Noble. Um, there's two bookstores. Uh, Village Works on St. Mark's has it, right. and the, the Bookmark Shop in Brooklyn has it. Um, and I also have it on my Etsy. And um, if you buy it on my Etsy, I'll sell you. I'll sell you. I'll send you a, a Brooklyn Hardcore pin as well. Oh, right. It's on. like the you know the the BKHC pin. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, and I'm I'm looking to get. Um, distribution anywhere really so uh are, know, are you like, are you happy are you happy with uh, so far how the book's getting out there yeah it's been out it's been out three weeks and uh i think my sales are a lot better than i thought and uh the response has been great and the response has been Good. really great from uh Good for you people people associated with hardcore more so than literary people which is even better because like mm. it's just and and it's all ages like young people older people uh so I'm really, yeah, it's, it's going really well, like so much better than I thought. Good. So, I'm, um, I'm happy for you, Eddie. You, you, you know, this is, this is important stuff. It's all part of our community and culture, man. You know, um, any, any upcoming, like what's next? Like, you know, now that you're kind of through the door with this, you know, what's on the horizon for Eddie McNamara? Yeah, I'm working on, uh, I'm working on two things right now. I'm working on another book, um, sort of about the satanic panic uh in the 90s and kind of like a it, it's going to be a novel a little crossover with uh maybe like a little west memphis three and a little like sort of the uh, the norwegian black metal thing so i'm doing right a novel, doing a novel about that and uh and then um I'm doing a lot of zodiac killer research and i might we just, uh, we just watched we just watched the zodiac doc you, oh the the one about how it's uh the the myth of the zodiac that one yeah we watched yeah. two of them actually yeah I, I've done a lot it of does, research. I, yeah, it doesn't sound like it was one guy, man. Yeah, no, no, dude, it's not. It's, it's like not I, one guy. Like I'm ready. I'm ready to write this book called "Like There's No Such Thing as a Zodiac Killer," you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, but, it also I, so, not to get big into it, but it sounds like the newspaper perpetuated it too. 
that yeah. whole bit. Yeah, very much so. Like, yeah, like yeah, to yeah. the point where it's like a fictional character, I think. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a question for you. What was the first live show you ever went to? First live show I went to, I was in eighth grade. I went to um, Nuclear Assault and Overkill. It was the first metal show. And the first wow. hardcore show I went to was Biohazard at Lemoore. I was uh, probably in the ninth grade. And I think it was maybe uh, Sheer Terror might have played. It might have been... It, Biohazard, Chromag, Sheer Terror, they all like it, 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 sometime around that point. And uh, it's just like, you know, how do you go back to like listening to Megadeth after that? You know, you're just yeah, like, yeah. this is fucking wild, you know? And, this, uh, this battlefield earth, you yeah, know? It's, it's, it's just like, I'm going to listen to like, you know, somebody, you know, like Dave Mustaine after that. Fuck that. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like these guys are, you know, <laughs> strangely, en strangely enough, I'm going to see I'm, I'm going to see Megadeth and Biohazard like yeah. well, ne next week. I, I gotta I gotta go talk to the Biohazard guys and show them the trailer next week. Interestingly enough, thank you, Eddie. Anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to thank? Uh, yeah, just uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's, it's really awesome, and uh, yeah, just thank all the all the all the Brooklyn people who are there and uh, you know sort of like lived through it and made the music and put on the shows and you know put out the records. Uh, you guys inspired me, so yeah, awesome. Thanks, Eddie. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, Drew. All right. My pleasure. Bye. Take care. Well, there you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, and Upstate Records. Yes, this is the, the, the new music release show. Um, everybody's welcome. Uh, we, we want, you know, it's what this show's all about. Let's give some shine. Let's give some shine to people that are uh, got some new stuff coming out. Let's talk to them. Let's let's see what's up. You know, can't talk about the same shit all the time. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Well, thank you, thank you, Josephine. We do we do two we do good shows here from Bridge Nine Records in Beverly, Massachusetts. Uh, that said, let's clear the deck. Let's bring on our next. The, the cavalcade of stars continues. Let's bring on our next couple of guests. Um, what can I say about these two guys? Uh, I've known these guys a long time. Uh, one of them has been on the show many, many times. Uh, he was a bass player. Uh, the band, the first hardcore uh, show I ever saw in 1981, uh, that would be Jamie Sharapa from SSD Control, um, who later went on to play in Slapshot. And uh, one of his bandmates was Mr. Mark McKay. And they have a new band now called The Long Wait. So here we go with Jamie Sharapa and Mark McKay. Brothers! What up, hey, Joe? Yeah, man. What do you say? It's all good. Hey, hey, great show last month, by the way. What's that? Go ahead, Mark. I was just saying, great show. Oh, yeah. Last night. Thank Same you. Thing. Yeah, that was a blast, man. I had a fun time there. Yeah. When, yep. was, the last when was the last time you saw me play, Jamie? <laughs> Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> 40 years ago right something like that yeah 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 we've had a long friendship man i appreciate yeah. it yeah well listen you know you know i i know you can handle it uh jack kelly like like cringes when i tell the story of like you know him taking to him taking me to the first hardcore show yeah. i ever went to yeah. yeah but but that's great so um let's talk about let, let, let me get let me get the uh let me get a cool band shot. Look at this. Look, look, what, look, look at you guys with these cool band shots, huh? <laughs> you guys, let's go. Let's go. So, bunch of old guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the long wait. Uh, Mark, uh, set the table for us. Uh, how the band come together, and and you know, just bring us up to speed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, obviously we've known each other for decades and decades. Um, you know, I had seen SSD and worked with Wrecking Crew and uh, Daryl's a hometown guy and, you know, Steve and I go way, way back. Um, so, you know, we kind of went through the whole cycle of, you know, being in bands together and seeing each other's bands and, and breaking up and splitting off and all that kind of thing. And um, we got back together about a little over a year and a half ago or so to do like a charity gig. Um, what was that the was that the um the not, slap not. Slap yeah not, slap not exactly which, which was basically alumni of Slapshot playing without Jack Kelly 
Yeah, because it was in, we wanted to do it in conjunction with like their celebration gig that they were celebration ah. weekend that they were doing in Boston. So right. we wanted to uh, you know put something together, raise some money for charity, and have some fun at the same time. So right, right. Um, so uh, you know all those things happened. We were able to raise some some dough for a good charity. Um, we you know through the course of you know learning how to play our instruments again and getting back together and finding out if if this was even possible. Um, you know we had such a great great time doing it. Um, uh, you know, it was like finding these old friends, you know, people you hadn't yeah. talked to in some cases, 20 years, you know, that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so J Jamie, who, so walk us through who's in the band. Uh, so yeah. Uh, well, like Mark said, once we did that slap nut thing, we were like, hey, man, let's just keep going with this. So uh, yeah. myself and Mark and Steve Ristine, uh, right. who's also the guitarist and slap shot decided yep. to, you know, let's continue this thing. We, we, weren't, we weren't calling it Slap Knot. We weren't sure what we were going to do, but we just wanted to keep on playing. Because like Mark said, a lot of us had stopped playing. Yeah. Um, I, I, mean, I, put, I don't think I picked up a bass in like 18 years. I was raising right. two kids and had other shit going on. Uh, but then uh, little by little, we started bringing other people into the fold. And uh, uh, Daryl Shepard, who's been like a fucking, you know, uh, a guitarist in Boston in, in probably 20, 30 bands. I mean, everybody mm. knows Daryl in Boston. If you're, if you're a Boston musician, you know, Daryl, uh, he was in, he was, he's in a band called kind. He played in Slapshot for a while. I think Mark, what was it like two or three years? He was in Slapshot. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I think he's did like three albums with them. Uh, it's Boston like this, this, uh, this is a lot of Slapshot alumni has been through. Uh, 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 Slapshot is, is the is the portal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I and mean, it's probably had like 20, 20 members in, over the thirty eight years or something that that yeah. been together. Right. Um, but yeah, so uh, so we, we got Daryl to, to to come in, and uh, and also uh, Keith Bennett was going to be the original singer. That's right. That's know, right. Keith originally yeah. from Wrecking Crew. Yeah, yeah, because he's got a million things going on, and he just couldn't commit the time to it. So yeah. uh, he sort of like stepped away. And then uh, Glenn Dudley from Wrecking Crew, uh, he came in. He was available. He had been uh, out in Portland uh, doing a band, uh, but then moved back to Boston. And I don't think he was doing anything. And uh, we uh, gave him a call, and he's like, yeah, I'll check it out. And we sent him some music. He shows up at practice, like three songs with the lyrics all written and ready to go. And, and then we just started you know, started moving real quick. We started writing a lot of songs and stuff. And then uh, we booked a show. We probably didn't played, uh, what was our first show? Back in April of this year, I think. Um, and it's just been a blast, man. Like I said, uh, uh, so many of us had sort of stopped playing. And so uh, to come back together and, and have, uh, you know, have it kind of be happening. I mean, we didn't know what how people were going to react, but people seemed to like it. We've been, you know, played, we played a few shows. We got a show coming up next month. Uh, we've got right. a bunch of shows booked for next year. So I'm, I'm, I'm pulling that up. Last now. This Slow and steady, though. You know, we really want to kind of work this through. Um, yeah. You know, I'm I'm getting more comfortable on, on drums. You know, this kind of stuff it was not my thing. Um, but, um, you know, playing playing with these guys and, and the vibe that we get together is just is kind of propelling me forward. Oh, is, this the, is. is this the next show? Yeah, that's the next show. It's like in about this, four weeks. This is the show that w when you were going to come down to new york and play that's right the, this is the one you were like dreading you were yeah. dreading our show because you had to because you guys were playing <laughs> two shows in a row you know? yeah yeah and we, like, were, we were dreading how tired we were going to be we weren't yeah. The show. <laughs> yeah so we were going to play the night before and then we we're going to hop in the car at 8 a.m and and head to new york for a for a matinee with you and right. but then you know things happened and that, that 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 didn't work out but uh well you guys you guys we're going to reschedule it. You guys must come play the Bowery Electric. We will. Um, and like I said, I, I think we're going to take, um, we're going to take January and February off just because I got so much shit going on and yep. we'll come back. Um, you guys will come down in March or April. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll be happy. Um, is, is a question from super supporter and friend, uh, RS 70 who, inf who influenced you guys in this particular band, Mark, like can you cite like a couple of influences here? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, Jamie Sharapa, uh, Daryl Shepard. I mean, you <laughs> know, as, as far as like the, the drumming style that I'm using with this, yeah. um, you know, I don't, I, I just don't listen to a lot of music like this. So I'm just mm -hmm. kind of working off what these guys are bringing. Um, right, so yeah. Jamie might be able to speak to, you know, kind of band influences and things like that more yeah. than I can. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really like, 
a, a drummer's drummer. So I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm playing off what these guys are bringing. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, uh, I was going to say that, uh, Mark, uh, he, he, uh, he doesn't give himself enough credit, I don't think, for, for, for his drumming, drumming abilities. Humble but, uh, guy. Yeah, we, we are not a hardcore band, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, you know, if a lot of people. We, 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 we are not. A, we are not a hardcore band. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people have that expectation of us mm -hmm. just because of our previous, uh, you know, our history. Um, right. I mean, we just try to stuff, write stuff that's super heavy. Um, right. You know, we're not. I wouldn't call us necessarily like a stoner rock band either, because we're not that slow. Uh, we're what, do you, what, do you, what do you? What do you? What do you? What are you tuned to? Uh, we're just, you know, regular uh, standard, standard, standard e -tuning. E -tuning. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, right on. Um, but uh, but you know, we just try to write shit that's super heavy. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you who my. I mean, I you know, the stuff I listen to maybe influences me, but but I you know, I'd say some of the you know early hardcore stuff influences me as well. I, I, we're I, I think we're kind of eclectic as far as our sound. It's hard to pinpoint. People always ask, oh, what do you sound like? We have no idea how to how to answer that question other than. You know, just we're just fucking heavy. <laughs> Every once in a while, I catch a snippet of like later SSD kind of stuff. Like right. that's that that's you know when we're going through the stuff, and I and I and that's how I kind of like feel that it reminds me of uh, of of like later SSD type stuff. Yeah, yeah, that might that that might be a fair uh, estimate. Yeah, that 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 makes that makes sense. Yeah. Which maybe maybe we don't want that because a lot of people hated that last album. So. <laughs> well, the thing is, like you know, it's I, you know, I I felt that you know uh, it, it had moved away from what the initial thing was, and that that hurt me deeply at the time when I was listening to hardcore. But you know, through the years, it's like, of course, you have to progress. Of course, you have to try yeah. different things, For and sure. that's you know that that helped to kind of heal me of of that um, you know uh, feeling bad about the hardcore scene dwindling and stuff like that and and here we are you know 58 plus years old you know banging on instruments still doing it in that vein and and um so yeah i, I learned, a, learned a valuable lesson i'm happy for you mark i i know you know it's been a couple of years and i'm i'm i'm, I'm happy that that you know you guys are, are are you know doing something creative and you're back out on the ball field i mean i really am that's great thanks drew that that means a lot i i yeah. um it, it took this bunch of guys um, yeah. to get me uh, off the couch again um i hadn't sure. played in eight ten years something like that and and it is like the love of these guys in the band that is, yeah. is got me back into it it wasn't you know that burning ambition to like play you know you know what part of it is uh i think uh, jamie i know you can relate to this uh, you know, at this stage of the game, and you saw we played last night. I like the guys that are yeah. in my band. Like, like, I'm close with them, and mm -hmm. like, they're my. You know, so, you know, when you're doing it, when you're doing it because you have to do it, or you're doing it because you need because it pays the bills. Yep. It, it's a different perspective than yo. It's funny, Jamie. Here we are, forty something years later. We're doing it because we love it. Absolutely. Still, again, just like when we were yeah. teenagers. Here yeah. we are, all these years later. And we do it because, you know, hey, we got we got our gigs. We got our thing. We're yeah. making music because we love doing it. And that's a damn good fucking reason to yeah. make art. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's like like Mark said, you know, we're all just everybody gets along really well. If anybody's got shit going on, we're like, all right, it's cool, man. We'll take a month off. You know, it's, it's no big yeah. deal. Um, it's just it's no drama, no, yeah. no stress. It's just been super fun the entire time. Are, are you uh, recording plans, Mark? Uh, we did we did a demo um which yep. is up on Bandcamp. um we did five songs um we, we definitely want to record again we had an awesome awesome experience doing that Good. um we liked the way it came out but we can definitely do better um mm -hmm. so um you know the, in the coming year i think we'll definitely you know pull out a seven inch and then you know hopefully somebody will be interested in the band and want to put out an lp for us so yeah you know i i think you're i think you're you're on the you know not that I'm not, you know, not that, not that I have any perspective on these things, but you're on the right track, man. Just have, you know what? Just have fun with it, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah like Mark said, we, we did do a, a recording um, and, you know, people can check that out. It's on Bandcamp. It's like yeah. five songs. I think they, cool. they're, they're a decent representation of what we mm -hmm. sound like. Yeah. Right on. Um, and, and, and Jamie, I guess I, I'll, I'll see you. At some point, um, maybe I'll come up for the SSD book signing that you're doing. Yeah, SSD's got all sorts of shit going on right now. We got uh, the book signing next weekend, and then uh, we got a you know, as you probably know, uh, the Trust Records is re-releasing the first two SSD albums. So um, we'll be doing some stuff around that. The first one comes out in uh, 
in November. Uh, you know, is, 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 uh, trust is putting out the kids will have their say and and uh, get it away. And get it away, yeah, yeah. Get it away will come out in uh, in 2024. I think April is the plan. So we'll probably do something in May. Uh, we're, there's been talk about maybe going out to the Punk Rock Museum uh, in May, right around the uh, Punk Rock Bowling uh, event. Uh, I happened to be out there last year. This, I mean, this year rather, uh, to uh, you know, to the museum at that during that week. It's yeah. fucking great. I don't know if you've been out there yet, True, the Punk Rock Museum. They they keep trying to get me to come out and do something. Yeah, you know, like, and I just sort of like slip out. Yeah, slip out from underneath <laughs> it. It's like. <laughs> You, you know, yeah. part of the reason, I'll tell you why. Part of the reason is that they're asking me to do something and it's going to end up costing me a couple thousand dollars to do it. Yeah. And it's like, hey, I'd love to screen my film out there. I'd love to do, but like, I don't really want to have to spend mm -hmm. $2,000 2, to screen my film with the Punk Rock Museum. I hear that. You know, yeah. um, you know because these days where I go, Rochelle goes, you know, I, yeah. I don't like going. I don't like going by myself anymore. Traveling yeah. and sitting around in hotel rooms by myself, so yeah. it's a drag. So where I go, she goes, and you know, going out to Vegas, and you know, uh, you know, just just like uh, like Eddie Mac, Eddie Mac, who who's who's in Atlantic City, you know, fucking uh, a fucking veggie burger is fucking fifty bucks, <laughs> you know, yeah. and like Vegas is the same shit. Yeah, and, and I don't like Vegas, man. Yeah, it's and no, no disrespect to anybody who lives in Vegas, but. Yeah. I don't really like Vegas yeah. much, you know. No, I hear that. Yeah, I, it, I, I mean, when I lived in LA, I used to go there all the time. It was fun, but you know, time to change. And and I don't know. It's it is. It's it's fucking. It's hot. And it's fucking. Yeah. It's just too many people. Whatever. But yeah, I mean, I'm down for whatever. You know, maybe I'm sure we'll sort it out at some point, and and I'll get out to the Punk Rock Museum and probably screen a couple films. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. But. You know, when I have so much stuff going on, it's sort of like, well, I'm not going to do this, this, and this, so I could go to the punk rock museum and. Yeah, you know. yeah, we were out there, uh, and and Roger and Vinny were out there. You know, they played yeah, the, the right. event, and, and Roger did a, a yeah, tour of the museum. Well, he, he hosted the tour, right? Yeah, that was fun. We went to that. That was that was cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, love you guys. Thank you, Mark. Anybody you want to shout out? Oh, just, you know, I mean, the, the sisters and brothers who come out and make noise at the shows and st and support the scene, um, you know, it's still uh, uh, very, very important to me. Um, and um, yeah, the guys in my band, I, I love you all. And, and I just want to keep on doing this as long as we can, as <laughs> long as we can do it. Fantastic. Jamie? Same thing, you know, family and friends, all the people that come out to the shows. Shout out to you, Drew, for doing this thing and appreciate yeah. you inviting us on. Absolutely. My pleasure. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. All right, dude. Love you. Bye, right. right, Carol. There you have it. The circus rolls on. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live from Bridge Nine Records in lovely Beverly, Massachusetts. If you're wondering what what this where I where I am, what what's going on, I am in the warehouse of Bridge Nine Records where uh, we played last night. Let's see, what, what, what else do, let me see what we got here. We, we, we played here last night. This is the, uh, this is the warehouse. There's some swag over there. Who needs swag? Free swag on me. What do you need? I got you. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, Chris. Um, that said, yeah. So, there you go. Um, that said, oh, you're watching from the car. Gina, you were here last, still driving home from last night. It's a great show last night. Uh, no, that, those aren't, those aren't our, that's, that's, those are the back line. That's the Larry Kelly, part of the Larry Kelly incendiary device, uh, uh, back line there. Uh, that said, we're going to continue on. I'm going to, we're going to take a, we're going to take a quick sponsor break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk some toys and we're going to talk RBNX and a little bit more. So here's a word from our sponsor. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on 
Facebook and Instagram. Hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young readers section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. Star Wars. We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. And we're back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. What's going on? Hey, I want to mention a couple of upcoming shows. One week from today, it is the return of the lunatic. The one, the only, Jack Grisham from TSOL. Back on the show talking about his new documentary, Ignore Heroes, True Sounds of Liberty. Yo, we love this guy. This is, I, yo, listen, I can't guarantee much in this fucking wretched existence, but I'll tell you this. Anytime Jack Grisham comes on this show, it's fucking great. So get ready for that. So Jackie's coming on one week from today, September 17th. A week after that, from one of the hottest bands in New York right now, Fucking Winter Wolf is a great, great band. Love this band. Uh, Reverend Tony Six will be coming on the show. Interesting character. Looking forward to having him on. A week after that, Shane from Napalm Death will be on the show talking about his autobiography. A couple days after that, Ill Bill. That's right. Will be on, co-hosted by Howie Abrams. We just announced this on Sunday, October 8th. A, a very controversial Leeway the Forgotten Ones documentary. We're going to have Leeway guitar player Michael Gibbons on and Michael Bennett Belmont, excuse me, uh, who edited the film. The film was on Amazon. Um, recently watched it. A little bit of a controversial film. Um, and we're going to talk about it. So check that out. And then Sunday, October 15th, Trevor from American Werewolves will be on the show. Uh, just a reminder, please support the show. The show needs your support. The show cannot exist without your support. Uh, there's the Patreon page. Uh, yo, the book is at the printer. Boom. The new book is at the printer. And if you're a patron, you're getting it for free. If I need to, if I need to remind you, I'm reminding you now. If you are a patron, you get the book for free. So uh, that's the New York Hardcore Chronicles, New York Hardcore Chronicles, Volume Two, 1990 to 1999, like we were talking about before, uh, the the age of violence. Uh, no, it's not on Netflix. The, the the leeway film is on is on is on Amazon. Amazon, and the book. Where is where's my book cover? Where is the book cover? Uh, let me show you if you haven't if you haven't seen it. Um, here it is. So this, this, yeah, uh, yeah. Here you go. This is free for all patrons. If it's free, it's for me. Uh, the order link is going to be going up this week. The pre-order link should be coming out in a couple of weeks. There it is. The New York Hardcore Chronicles Volume Two, 1990 to 1999, a flyer oral history. This is a cool one. Uh, the blurbs on the back: Evan Seinfeld from Biohazard. Uh, Lenny from Fahrenheit and Crazy Eddie and, and Howie Abrams. So this is heading to, it's actually at the printer and is being printed up. So 
There, there you go. Um, join Patreon, get it for free. If you don't want to join Patreon, order the book. Help me help you. Uh, that said, let me clear the deck. Let's bring our next guest on. You get rid of all this. Next up, hailing from Long Island. Uh, what can I say? Uh, let's get to know her a little bit. This is Kayla from Toys. Tired of your shit. How's it going? What's going on? How are you? I'm good. How's it going, Drew? It's good. It's good. Thanks for coming on. Great show so far. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. It's, it's good. You know, I'm just bang, banging it out, you know. Um, let's talk about the band. Um, and and I'm excited. I, I, I know our paths are going to cross because you guys are playing the Holiday Slam Beret. Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. We're super excited to do so. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, like I, I've told you before, women, women of the pit, of course, champion your cause, uh, put you on my radar screen, said this, we love this band. We must have this band play. Yeah. So, huge shout out to women of the pit. They're all awesome, supportive, yeah, beautiful yeah. women. We love them. Yeah. And I was like, listen, if you feel that strongly about it. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. <laughs> yeah, right. If you feel that strongly about it, uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Um, you know, uh, how, you know, how, how you came into music and, and, and quickly and sort of how this band came to be. Go ahead. All right. So me personally, I started going to shows back in, uh, 2013 when, um, when I just got out of high school, that's when I got into the local scene on Long Island. Mm -hmm. My first show was the uh, the Punk Rock Barbecue. I'm sorry, 2014. Mm -hmm. The Punk Rock Barbecue. We saw Murphy's Law that night. Uh, CJ Ramon played. It was awesome. Uh, last was, that, was, that, was that was that the was that the Punk Rock Barbecue that um, uh, Big Howie Fight Back used to put together? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. yeah. 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 We played a couple of those. He used to do those in Babylon. What did he? Yeah. Play? It started yeah. off at uh, Sinclair's. That's right. We, we played. We played a couple of yeah, those. Yeah. That place hasn't been around for a little while. Now. That was that place. Was, was that place was that. that place was grimy. Yo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> show specifically, I just remember. Uh, yeah. Being stuck to the ground for like half the show. Yeah. I was just stuck in one spot because my yeah, shoes yeah, yeah, yeah. were coming off that gook. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So go on. <laughs> But yeah, so that's when I started going to shows. I had started uh, my old band, Cherry Pop, shortly after that um, yeah. with a few of my uh, friends, Nick, TJ, and uh, Austin, who now plays in The Stress. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so we started that. We went for about six years up until uh, last year when we started Toys, Tired of Your Shit. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot angrier, a lot heavier, and in your face, and uh, women power, so... Mm. Yeah, that's how all this started. Is let me let me grab a photo here. Where's my where's my? Let's see. Yeah, some nice photos. Um, here is a photo of the crew. Tell us who's in, tell us who's in who's in the band. What's going on? All right, so that's me all the way on the left. Uh, mm -hmm. We got Jess. She plays guitar. She's sitting right next to me. And mm -hmm. Jasmine, she is our drummer. We've been friends for a very long time. We got into the scene around the same time. Um, she plays in a lot of different bands. She's in Shoot the Five, plays bass. Um, Nikki's actually not in the band anymore. We do have a new bassist. Uh, v plays bass now, Victoria. So uh, we don't have any updated pictures. We need some new uh, professional photos, though. Yeah. With her in the, in the band. And <laughs> is there... Did this happen already? Wait, what is this? Hold on. I'm looking at the date on the September 30th. This hasn't happened yet. No. Oh, this our uh, EP release show. Yeah. So we just oh, the released e the EP. Well, you better get a fucking bass player. No, we have one now. We do oh. have a new bass player. Her name is Victoria. She's awesome. She right. kills it. Yeah. So uh, this is at the end of the month, September 30th. You can stream it now on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Bandcamp, YouTube, everywhere. So um, we will have physical copies at this show, though. It's at Gold Sounds. It's yeah, a good. Uh, uh, this is a good bill. The stress in Pembroke, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Bitch Switch. They're another yeah. uh, Long Island band. They're yeah, awesome. Yeah. Fulano just played two nights ago. Um, they played with the Eris and RBNX, actually. So they, they were awesome. 
I missed their set, but I heard that they killed it. So I'm excited. How'd you, co how'd you come up with, how'd the name, how'd you come up with toys? I love it. Toys, tired of your shit. Tired of your shit. Yeah. I, I mean, it. I love acronyms. So that's yeah. where I came from. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. It just kind of came to me one day. So it was cool. Like it sounds all cutesy and innocent at first, but then when you find out what it stands for, you're like, okay, they mean business. Yeah. I, and I, I like the band photos there. It's like real, wait, excuse me. I actually, wait, you know what? It just hit me. Is this is this at the Amityville? Is it Amityville Music Hall yes, right here? Is. This is that was, this is uh, the back. This is the backyard of the Amityville Music Hall. Mm -hmm. That was when we played our Urban Wastes record release show back in May. We took those pictures. Yeah, right. the same picture you showed before. That's up on that like little bar they have in the corner. Right. There. Yeah, yeah, we got is it, promo what, photos what, there. Yeah. I, I just reckon I just recognize that as yeah, we as did a, that like an hour before the before the show started. We had like a whole little photo shoot going on back there. <laughs> that was us. Ed, Levy actually took those photos. He takes awesome photos. He's always at hardcore shows. Taking and this, this is a rehearsal room. This is uh yeah at our practice space. That's actually at the A room in Hicksville. What um, what rehearsal space is in Hicksville? Uh, the A room. Oh, the place is called the A room. The A room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not sure where it's located exactly. Yeah, but yeah it's I right do, up in Hicksville. Um, yeah, I do not. I do not know. Of, I do not know of this place. Yeah, no, they're they're great. They got was nice it, big rooms. Was it was it a um a conscious choice like for your next band? Like, I want to be a, in a band with all gals. Like, w w was it like uh, enough? Uh, like, this is what yeah, I want to do next. Yeah, enough of the testosterone. Like, we need some girl energy yeah. up in here. That was definitely the plan. That was what we were what we're looking to do. So. Yeah, and it worked out great. Like we're all great friends. Me and Jess Good. met a couple of years ago um, at a conflict show, actually, and yep. she's great. We became really close once the band started. Uh, Jasmine, she, she, I know she's her she's a pretty she's a pretty proficient guitar player. Oh yeah, she's yeah. And, yeah I'm yeah. so proud of how everyone has like advanced That's cool. since this band started. We've all definitely been working our asses off too for this um, this EP that we just put out. Like we really we worked hard, so we're all very proud of it. And if anybody wants to reach out, follow the band on Instagram. It's at T period O period Y period S uh, S underscore underscore. Two underscores. <laughs> like we talked about before, like fucking people. Somebody has all that with one underscore. Oh, it's impossible. Yeah, That's it's crazy. it's impossible to get a good name nowadays. There's no that originality is, anymore. <laughs> that, that is fucking that that that's that's nuts. Um, yeah, RS seven. Yes, uh, I believe she's from Long Island. Yeah, RS. From Long Island. Yep. Yeah. Born, it's born and raised. In, born and raised born in Long raised. Island. Yes. Yeah. My whole life. And Long Island's a whole world unto itself. There's. Oh, it there's, really there's, is. I like this whole city scene. When I came out to the city, I was like, "This is like a whole other world that I never <laughs> knew existed." Like I knew bands from out here, but it's totally different. It there's really people is. like you, you Long Island people, the city. Like no, anywhere we don't go. We don't go, west, into, uh, we don't go into the city. Yeah, Queens, Brooklyn. No, it's all New York City to me. <laughs> that's that, that's funny. Um, what what you personally like? Big musical influences on you? Who who really who really spoke to you as a young person? Uh, personally, especially as like a lyricist, I love Lou Reed, uh, The Stones, some of my favorite bands. Yeah, um, good. As far as girl bands, The Distillers, obviously, wow. Plasmatics. They're mm. they're all great. Yeah, as wow. a band, um, we're very influenced by like Negative Approach, a lot of like the old school like hardcore stuff too. We love. Uh, yeah. Just saw Gorilla Biscuits the other night. They're a huge influence on me. One of my favorite bands. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So, so some good of them, show. a lot of our, a lot of our local friends and bands are really our biggest influence. I'd say yeah. like just the bands that we see on a weekly basis and go sure. out and continuously support and that continuously support us. Well, I, I, I know that, um, there's like a real circuit out in Long Island. Like there's a lot of bands that like don't even get in, don't, don't get to play into the city. You know, it's like Long Island, like, you know, we're playing, you Long know, Island. <laughs> The, See, the, we the, want to play everywhere, Long Island, the city, upstate. Like, we want to go wherever they'll take us, we'll go. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to, man. I mean, yeah, you, know, you know, you know, you have to. Unless you're like us, we just we just play the Bowery Electric, and that, that's all we ever do. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just excited. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. Here's one last photo of, of, of the last lineup of the band. Yes. And, and everyone's looking forward to uh, 
the 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 next lineup. Uh, Absolutely. Of, of um, you know what? Let's do this. Does does anybody have any questions uh, for for Kayla uh, and for toys? Why don't we let me see if anybody comes up with anything like uh, any questions? Don't get don't get too fucking weird don't be either. Shy. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get, get weird. Don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I say? Get get go deep. Get weird. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Long Island, South Canada. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Lori <laughs> Dawn says everyone go everyone go stream everyone go stream the EP. You will love it. Thank you, Lori. So yeah. supportive. We love Lori. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's the one. Mm -hmm. You know. Gina says, let's do some pics. Hell hey yeah. Gina, you gonna send me some pictures from last night or what? I still need to see those pictures we took at uh, Gorilla Biscuits uh, Friday night. Me, Gina, you, phot boy. you photographers out there, you got to understand, you got to turn the pictures around within like a fucking hour yeah, or, or the moment's <laughs> gone. It's fucking unbelievable, yeah. man. It's like people send me pictures two weeks later. Hey, uh, Nikki Bullets, Car Bomb, what's up, man? The EP oh, yeah, is, thank the EP you. It's nasty. Yeah. Okay, Joe I Frank asks. Car Bomb Parade, they're great dudes. Jo jo Joe oh, Frank God. asks, "What's your ideal lineup for a show? Who would you love to play with? Like, let's with, with, with that's within sort of our reality." So, um, well, I mean, I'm already really stoked to be playing with No Redeeming Social Value. They're that's a good one. They're a great band yeah, and yeah. one of my favorite hardcore bands. So that's like a dream come true. I am so sure. excited for that. Um, let's see, let's see. I'd love to play with Murphy's Law again. They're fucking great. Always, a, always Murphy's a good Law. time. Yeah, they're great. Um, <laughs> yep. Let's see. Now I'm like on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, great local bands we'd yeah. love to play with too that we haven't gotten a chance to play with. So for, for, yeah. for sure, we're yeah. happy to have played with Urban Waste. That was really cool. Right on. So yeah, we've so, only had a couple shows, but we already got to play with some really sick bands. Cool. And uh, for those uh, that missed it the first go round, uh, coming up on Sunday, December seventeenth, at our beloved. Bowery Electric, free, all ages Sunday matinee. Uh, this is uh, hosted, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics. And it is No Redeeming Social Value, Butterbrain, RBNX, Shum Huffer, and Toys. And keep in mind, you know, the last time um, No Redeeming played was probably the most crowded we've ever had uh, the Bowery Electric. That was a so, good show too. That, that was, was that was a good yeah. one. So we're looking forward to them. Uh, yes, and everyone is on the guest list. <laughs> it, it's 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 a uh, oh, how you doing, Jessica? Hey, she, she it's it's an inside job. She's planting a question. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite track on the EP? All right, my favorite track is probably the second song, "Better Off Dead." Because that song took us forever to get down and get super tight, and we're all really proud of it. I, that's definitely my favorite. Um, Fantastic. My second favorite, and probably everyone else's, is the first one. Uh, why is everything chrome? So that's also a great song. They're all that's the name of the song. It's like why, 10 why is long. everything chrome? Why is everything chrome? So I don't know if you're into the whole SpongeBob thing, but <laughs> I grew up uh, on SpongeBob, as did a lot of people with the. Uh, so we have like a little inside joke. It's when one of the episodes, that's where it came from. So cool. got a Good. little bit of our childhood in there. <laughs> you know, uh, songs, with, like when you're in a band and, and you record, it's interesting. Like, you know, you record and, you know, there's, cert there's, there's certain um, tracks that you sort of like take for granted. And then years later, it comes back around and those are the tracks that, wow, you know, this, this one was really great. And then ones that you love, you're like, I never want to hear that again. Uh -huh. you know yeah absolutely. so you know um is the name tired of your shit about something specific um i mean it's kind of very general i'm tired of a lot of shit <laughs> but, tired yeah, of it. it's really just like tired of like um as much as we love our hardcore scene tired of the macho guy fucking attitude as we were talking you guys were talking about with the book before there's a lot of that macho shit a lot of uh women feeling uncomfortable at shows and like having to, you know, not be able to have as good of a time as they want to have because you have all those macho douchebags ready to knock your teeth out. 
Got stuff it. like that. Um, but yeah, that's really what we're aimed towards. We're just making fun of like a lot of that, uh, a lot yeah. of that attitude. So yeah, it's interesting. That shit. <laughs> I, I, it's interesting. I guess in some regard, things are not nowhere near as violent as they used to be. But then again, there's a certain faction and, and a certain contingent and certain shows that are very violent these days. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Like yeah. with all the crowd kill with all the crowd killing and everything. Yeah, you tired know? of the crowd killers, tired tired yeah. of the uh, misogynistic bullshit that we see on a day to day basis. I'm tired yeah. of it all. Right on. I'm gonna tell well, you about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna scream in your fucking face. Exactly. And let you know that. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on. Anybody you want to uh, shout out or thank? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Women of the Pit. Shout out to uh, all the bands we're playing with that are EP release, The Stress, Bitch Witch, Fulano, uh, Pembroke. We're excited to play with all of them. Uh, shout out to RBNX, who you're going to talk to after. We're also yep. playing with uh, in December. Yeah, they're on the bill too. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm excited. Yep. Shout out to the Eris. Shout out to AB Studios. <laughs> uh, shout out to the non-residents. I love those guys. Shout out to all wow. my favorite They're great. Uh, yeah, they got it going them. on. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. We so. just you, uh, you were there at that show they just played at, at the Barry Electric. Oh, yeah. They kill it every time. It's always wow. a good time. I told, them, I told them, yo, next time you play the Barry Electric, you're headlining because you guys are just, you guys are fucking great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. When that happens, let us know because I'd love to play with them. Right now. <laughs> All right. T take care. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. See ya. All right. Bye-bye. There you have it. Boom. Bye. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live from Bridge Nine Records in lovely Beverly, Massachusetts. Often imitated, never duplicated. A um, couple of other events I want to tell you about. I want to tell yous. I want to tell yous about it. I'm stalling right now because truth be told, and when this show ends, I'm dreading. I got to get in the car and drive four and a half hours home. So that said, coming up, uh, Saturday, September 30th at Dingbats. Spoiler NYC, the take, Ice Cold Killers, Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. And Frequency Overload. Oh, dude. Hey, we're dusting off the Drew Stone Hit Squad. We're playing at Organic Grill. All are welcome. It's free. Come on down. Eat some of Vlad's grub. This just announced, Mike from Channel 3, they're coming to New York. I am moderating the book event. His new book is called Miles Per Gallon. This is at Generation Records, and Channel 3 is playing. This is going to be a very cool event. That is Saturday, November 11th, which is the day before our record release show at the Barry Electric. Incendiary Device, debut album. Being put out by Bridge Nine Records, Sunday, November 12th, Rebelmatic, The Craze, Cortisol, and Pembroke. A month after that is the Holiday Slamboree, brought to you by Women of the Pit and New York Hardcore Comics. That said, let's bring, hey, what's up, Dom Foos? How's things in Cleveland, brah? I, ho I, hope, I hope they are well. Um... That said, let's bring on our next next bunch of fellas. Um, this is, uh, I actually haven't seen uh, the drummer since a couple of hours ago. He sat in with us. Our regular drummer, Mike Flattery, had a kid the other day. And uh, he was, Phil was kind enough to sit in with us. Let's bring on the guys from RBNX. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Long time no see. <laughs> you guys have a good time last night oh man it was a dream unbelievable it was great it was a good, I'm, awesome, I'm still here i know hey. i'm still here drinking the liquid death you want to stay oh uh, you still that's got, you got the <laughs> yeah. show us your bed show us your bed what's your favorite flavor <laughs> inside the of the liquid show, death. what's your favorite flavor you know i like this one i'm drinking right now is uh what is this? It's watermelon. Uh, convicted melon, a sparkling watermelon. And then I was fucking with this one here, which is rest in peach. Ah, clever. <laughs> nice. You're so gonna, let's well, talk. You're going to piss so many times on the ride home, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had one of those like 
sleeps last night, you know, after playing and being all zapped up and a little caffeined out, like I got up like, you know, 30 times, you know, and then I had to get up and, you know, set up this show. So uh, oh my God. it's all smoke and mirrors. Hey, um, you, you know, Phil, tell us about uh, who's in the band, how the band comes, give, give, give us, bring us up to speed on RBNX, quick history, uh, who's right. in the band and, and what's going on. All right, so we got Mike over here. He plays bass. He's also our singer. This is Kyle. He's our guys? guitar player. He's been doing vocals. I play drums and make us look good. I've also been screaming a lot, so <laughs> it's, been, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, I, we've all we all went to high school together. Kyle and I are a year apart. He's three years older than us, and uh, yeah, we've been playing together. I've been playing together with him since 2004, and Mike was at our first show that we played in Poughkeepsie. He was playing punk. We were playing more metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, like, our friendship kind of kept growing throughout the years. And the last 10 years, we've been really, like, playing a lot together. And the last six, we've just been putting into high gear. So it's it's we are kind of seeing that coming to fruition now. We planted a lot of seeds. Are, are you guys from Poughkeepsie? Wappingers, which is right outside of Poughkeepsie. W Wapp Wappingers Falls? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the mom from the show Wishbone went to our high school. I think that's the only famous person, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had music class together. Mike was, Mike was homecoming King when I was a freshman. <laughs> Mike, uh, Lori Dorn says Mike got the pit started last night. He fucking oh, did. He sweat more I than try. I. <laughs> I try. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Without getting too crazy. No. You know? Yeah. So we're just, we're just, we're literally brothers. We're not real brothers but this is my family this is my chosen family and, and has the band always been a three-piece yes yep yeah. yeah. you guys are like 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 the Jimi hendrix experience like cream like you know you're like rush you're like a power trio everyone so, loves a power trio <laughs> power three yeah uh, it, makes, it makes traveling easier too <laughs> yeah joe joe uh joe frank says uh, they killed it opening for Life of Agony, ran into the drummer at, at the My Bitter Bitter End show, yep. plus yeah. they jam with my boys and leave it behind. Yeah, leave it yeah, behind. Yeah. That, those are our boys. Yeah. Fucking love leave it behind. Yeah, man. Uh, Re Reverend Nikki Bullets from Car Bomb Parade, one of my favorite shows ever. We played with RB and X in the back of a steakhouse oh, in yeah. a food oh, fight. Oh, yeah. We crashed a 20-year high school anniversary. Yeah, Mike booked yeah. the show. Yeah, Mike booked the show that's now at a, the Poughkeepsie Steakhouse. Yeah. They stopped letting us do it when they turned into like a straight up steakhouse. Like, no more, yeah. no more. But yeah, there was a food fight. Dude, there was a tray of cookies. Were cookies. That oh, yeah, there's cookies yeah. everywhere. Awesome. Oh, we God. paid the band in cookies. All the Vicky got paid in cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about um, this new release. Awesome. Um, uh, give forward. us some background on it. What's happening? Where can people get it? All right. So this is Nothing Here Is Yours. This is our second LP, uh, our first one. Surrounded by Sin came out, I want to say, three or four years ago. Uh, this is basically the culmination of all of our hard work. The last probably five years we wrote this record. During the pandemic, we really got the opportunity to play, like, every day because, like, work wasn't really, like, a thing. So yeah, four or five times a week we were getting together and mm -hmm. fucking riffing it up and fucking yep. writing new shit. And it just, songs just started coming out. Yeah, we were like, we're oh, let's do an EP. Time. And then an yeah. EP turned We were actually into originally thinking of doing a cover album. <laughs> and then originals just started flowing someday out, so. yeah someday. It, it really just flowed out and uh we played all the songs live and we just kind of like set these broad stroke goals we just got our vinyls we just got our vinyls we we're just so. numbering them we we're just numbering them so i saw i saw you left the other side there yeah. you go dude I'm i saw you left, right here, you left a couple here you left a couple here in my home at Bridge Nine Records. <laughs> oh, you live there now? <laughs> I live here now. I live on the drum riser. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chris actually, he took five of our records last night. So, you know, very, it was very generous. Thank you. I'm not sure if he's waiting until it's actually out on the 29th or if you can get it in store there. But no, go grab him. Tell, tell everybody, go grab one there, and, and then he'll get more. <laughs> <laughs> and here is. A shot of you guys with the test pressing zing zing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's actually a mic Mike from, from Leave Behind's behind house. house. Happy birthday, Mike. It's his 40th birthday, 40th birthday Happy today. Birthday. Happy 40. Yeah. So we got our so we're on Patient Zero Records, which is the same label as the take. Oh um, wow. Yeah. yeah. So we That's are on cool. Yeah. So we um oh, we ordered this and it are we got our test press in three weeks, man. We got it in three weeks. We listened to it at our boys' house at a great setup. And as soon as we finished the artwork, we placed the order and 
with three weeks to our release, which is the 29th, yep, uh, we got it. And then the 30th, uh, we do a annual fest called Box Fest, which is going to be our CD release show. It's kind of an homage to a friend that passed of ours that kind of like really lights our fuel. That was the band that we, Mike and I played with along. Uh, did did, while you, we did doing... you send me that flyer? The uh, Box Fest, I didn't, but I'll, se yeah. I'll send you that. That's at the end of the month. If, I mean, oh, okay. Oh, so yeah, it's the 30th, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, September 30th. I said, yeah, September 30th up here in Catskill. Everyone's welcome to come. We got a bunch of bands. We got Prostitution. We got Nikki from Carbon Parade doing uh, acoustic. We got um, fucking World Sucks. Uh, uh, Exit 17, the band our friend Lunchbox was in. That's the one year. And if we do every one year, one show, that's it. And it's our it's our record so, release show. Yeah, the record release. We got everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, what what's with this stuff? Oh, oh, so so this is these are next week. This is our next show. We're doing a double header. We're playing with, at Mother Pugs. Uh, thanks to uh, Jeff and Rage. Who's How many actually bands are playing this thing? Three hundred bands. Um, ten, yeah, right? Ten. I don't ten. know. I failed math, but there's a bunch, <laughs> and uh, they're mostly metal bands. But so so we're gonna play a heavy. We're gonna play our heavier set, but. Uh, we're doing a double header. We're actually playing a skate park up in Poughkeepsie or Newburgh that same and day. The, at the same day. And then well, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Well, you're park. getting ahead of yourself. So uh, is, this, is this happening? Jay is Bird. this one happening first? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, the Jay Bird one. so, so you, let me get this straight. You're going to play the skate park in Newburgh. Uh -huh. Yes. Newburgh, Walden. New York. Walden, and then Newburgh. from there, you're going to get in the vehicle and drive down to Staten Island. Yeah. To play Mother Pugs where the shit starts late anyway. Yep. Rock and roll, bro. That's what it's all about, man. I didn't hear yeah. no bell. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Walden, Walden Skate Park. Yeah, so this is for, Yeah, you uh, asked me, you Phil, you asked me if we wanted to play this, I think, with you. Yeah, I mean, we have tons. I mean, we book ourselves. We don't have, like, a booking promotion, but, like, we're kind of like, if you book it, they will come. Very DIY. But this isn't our event. We're just playing uh, for uh, – it's a memorial show for Jay Bird, who was a close friend of a lot of our friends. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, and also like, there is never a no when it comes to a skate park. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, Joe, Joe Frank, yeah, it's your hometown, bro. So Come on out, gotta, Joe, we'll see you there. there. <laughs> you better probably, get off your ass. I think we're gonna play first or second so we can make it down to Mother Pugs. But, yeah, so uh, we'll be early, we'll put, we're playing there. Yeah. You guys so. are like, you guys are like, it's like what Phil Collins did when he played Live Aid. He like, he played, he played, he like opened up the show at Wembley Arena, and then he got on the Concord and flew to flew to the East Coast and played, you know, in Philadelphia. So oh my god, our plane's yeah. broke. Our plane's broken, so I'm we're just using my right now. yeah. We're working on my yeah. You using my t-shirt cannon. Yeah, the t-shirt cannon's coming. That's our ultimate goal. That's all we the do. The t-shirt death <laughs> death by t-shirt cannon. Uh, Phil, I want to find. Oh, by the way, I just sent over photos to you from last night. You checked the group text, but uh, special shout out to our, our photographer, Dave Baccio. He, uh, he's our fourth member. He's not with us, but he face is photo. face photo at face photo 77, but he sent a bunch of photos from last night. Um, please, well, here, yeah. Here's one. I think, I don't know who took this, whether it was Rochelle or Larry, but look at you digging in back there, Phil. Was that before or after the uh, bass drum pedal uh, incinerated? You know what? That shook me up a little bit. Like, you, oh, it shook you up. I'm glad it shook you up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is with, with incendiary device? It's just like everything is so regimented. It's like we come out and we go boom, 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 stop. Boom, 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 stop. Boom, oh, yeah. boom, stop. And it's like all of a sudden you're like, oh, my pedal's broke. And all of a sudden we have to stop where we've never stopped before. Supposed and I'm be like, hey, what's up, everybody? I'll I'll take it off the invoice. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you you did have another pedal, right? Yeah, I mean, Larry got it. Larry Kelly, like Mr. Wolf, set everything up. He had yeah. this awesome pedal, yeah. and I just one thing came like I hit hard. It yeah. came loose. It went flying, and shit happens. Like if you come see us, like we were just on tour. We played. I think it was Maryland. My cymbal fell off. It was Richmond, Rich, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. It was right. repository. I broke this. Uh, my how you string the symbols fell apart yeah right dude we're just, like just things are flying everywhere at that point i'm just putting on my head oh, like man, mike we're playing mike's putting my hi-hat on my like my it's like While i'm playing fuck it fuck it who cares hey, hey, phil, phil um as a drummer like who who are your big in drumming influences damn well dave lombardo for sure was like probably the first one but i mean lars ulrich is probably the gateway and then you kind of like go yeah. from there but um more i mean dave 
uh, Dave Grohl, um, Dale Crover from the Melvins, right uh, Vinny Paul, uh, a sure. little more modern drummer, Ben Caller from Converge. Um, he's a little more choppy, but I mean, anything kind of just to add to the pot, whatever, you know, whatever like happens, mm-hmm. happens. I, I always call myself a metal drummer, but like, I love everything. And like, I'm, I'm a heavy drummer and all, you know, I try to yeah. like blend all my influences, make it myself and uh, hopefully the glasses don't fall off. Well, you were holding, you've been, you're holding it down for us and, and we're not, we're not a metal band. You know, no, but you're heavy. You're fuck, and and that's we? We, yeah, you're heavy band. Like last night, like it was heavy. It was a heavy. Like I just wanted, like it was a good set, man. And uh, yeah, it was an honor, really. Thank you again. Well, you're our guy now, so you know. Oh, shit. A- anytime, Thank you. Any, anytime, you know, Mike is you know reproducing, <laughs> you know, which you know, my pullout game strong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> anytime, you know, right. Anytime, Mike, you know. Yeah, ask Mike. No, yeah. uh, Joe Frank says I'm playing ten minutes up the road in Pine Bush with the Arm Armalite rifles. Armadillo like, rifles. Yeah, they're yeah. fucking awesome. Fucking Jimmy yeah. Pogo, um, Greg. Fucking awesome. Fucking band. They're like great fucking dude. Just fucking. Right on. Yeah, they're like they're old school punk rock. And at the end of their set, they bring out a fucking milk crate of really cool shit, like springs from cars and pans and pots and shit, and they get everybody all fucking into it. They're a good time. Sick, yeah. They're fucking good guys. Yeah, it's a great area for music, man. There's a lot of stuff up here, and everyone's doing something. So, the I chance, mean, the chance is still happening. So, chance is closing under the name, but someone's coming in and and gutting it, and I, I believe it's going to be nicer. Um, and bro, gonna... I've been hearing about the chance closing. No, it's happening. It happened. It's no, done, but, no, they were trying to sell it for a long time, they and then it. the owners had, a, you know, they had passed away. The crew is still keeping it going. And new people came in and they bought it. And like they were saying, you know, the loft, the floor of the loft is caving in. I've gone to ska so shows and you're like, yo, you guys got to stop dancing <laughs> because the fucking floor is moving. But I mean, like, yeah. hopefully they're going to keep the whole crew and, and and make it nice, you know, and really like keep it going. Yeah. And it means a lot to us because like that's where like we went like we, we, we went, that was our first there. show that we all played we all together. play there at Crandall like, Street but yeah. that's the you know, Street. I've said it I've said it on the show many times is that you know back in back in the day uh, you know the chance was part of like a really vibrant music circuit and it was like that was the place you played like before you played New York City or right after that was like the 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 um it was a tour date uh, quintessential. Monday play. night or like Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday night show yeah, was test the it out. Yeah. Well, it was like, you know, we're playing New York on Friday. We're doing the chance on Thursday, you know? We got we got to get to Albany somehow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a- 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 absolutely. Well, yeah. thanks uh once again. Uh here's here's the new record and uh where can people buy it? So you can go to patient0413.com. That's Jerry's label. Uh, you can go there and buy the blue version of it. He's got 75 of those uh, over in Germany. I believe you can get it at uh, Demons Run Amok for Europe. That's in Europe. And then um, we have black and red copies, 106 of each of those. And you can go to our band camp and get it there, rbnx.bandcamp.com. You can go check out our website too, rbnx.net, and it'll lead you there also. Yeah. So. And you guys are you guys are part of this uh, melee, right? Very excited. Yeah. Very excited. Super hyped. Yeah. Yeah. So this, will, this is going to be a great show. Um, Very excited. You Holy know, shit. this holiday. Every year we do this holiday show, and uh, it's well attended. And we got a really strong headliner. And we, we, you know, we got like a bunch of good time bands this year. You know, so it's it, 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 it's going to be fun. It's going to be the fun. first time I seen No Redeeming. My boys played for them, opened up the show up in the loft, actually. Uh-huh. They brought a fucking microwave and during the fucking set, NRSV fucking smashed it on the fucking ground. Like, oh, <laughs> tile all over the place. Like, you know, a little bit of mayhem, but not too many, not too much violence, you know? Yeah, those those guys like okay, those, those guys excel at mayhem, you wow. know. I'll bring yeah. the hot pockets. Anybody you guys want to shout out? Uh, uh we yeah. gotta so we're actually um just getting put out on this compilation record i don't know if it's exactly out now i know you can check it out on spotify i don't know if it's got physical copies but it's the brown table hv uh they're a mosh crew you know they get a little wild they beat the shit out of each other but you know they keep everybody else out of it for the most part, the most part. and uh yeah we got our fucking a lot of friends from the hudson valley on that comp uh phil's band flowers for burial 
He's in another band, just yeah. so you guys know. Um, uh, we got the Stubborn Records comp. We just did a cover for um, Hub City Stompers. Uh, we're on there with a lot of sick bands. That's and also, yeah, so we're on, yeah, so we're on that as well. Right on. Um, and we're going to be doing, so we're going to be writing while all this stuff's going yeah, on. Definitely shout out to our fourth member, Dave Baccio, uh, our videographer, Steve Meal. He does all of our videos. Also shot my wedding if you need any. <laughs> <laughs> you can check our YouTube for music videos. Yeah, yeah. we got yeah, two got music, music videos out. Videos. And uh, we got to shout out our buddy Skylar Onder. Underdog, who, who who mix and master all of our stuff. So we have oh. a team. It's not just the three of us. Alan like, Douch is mastered. Alan Douch is mastered. He, his oh. list is a mile long. Um, we have a crew. It, like it's a whole team. Our it's family. Our, our girls yeah. for letting us stop, do this. Yeah. Stop, stop <laughs> too much. Stop too much. being humble, Phil. We all know you're a tyrant. And it's all you. Oh, no. Oh, dude. So do you. All right. So last thing is we all have nicknames when we're pissed off. So this is Spicy Kyle. I'm Feisty Phil. And this is fucking Mike. Because when, when, so, when shit goes down, it's fucking Mike. It's well, not Mike. Fucking it's Mike. Fucking, fucking, Mike. It's fucking and Danger Dave. But he never gets mad. No. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are having such a good time at it. It's it's what refreshing. It's about, and uh, I wish, I wish to, you... Oh, go sorry. ahead. Shout out to everybody uh, doing Hudson Valley Hardcore, everybody in New York Hardcore. We fucking love everybody. Fucking everybody thank you for all your support. Thing. Fucking thank you so much. Fuck yeah. yeah, and this and this awesome dude named Drew Stone. He's pretty cool. Thank, thank you, Drew. Stone. Thank you for having us, man. <laughs> My pleasure. I do it because I love it. I'll see you guys soon, okay? All right. All right, take care. Be well, Bye-bye. Thank you, Drew. Well, there you have it. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we are sponsored by blah, 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 and the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces as well as the style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list Includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Raleigh, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages. And of course, www.texassilverrush.com. Last but not least, are you looking for extreme music? DTFM Vinyl has got you, my friend. They have the largest located on 13th Ave in Fargo, North Dakota. We have the state's best selection. The best selection of punk, hardcore, metal, ska, oi, and more. Can't make it in? Shop online from anywhere in the country at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com. DTFM Vinyl, where the policy still is and always will be. Death to false metal. That said, we got a couple of minutes. Let's open it up. Uh, let's open it up. Who would you like to see on the show? Any questions? Anything weird? Feel free to ask it. If you need any advice in your love life, uh, with your job, how to handle your kids, uh, hygiene issues, um, here we go. This is it. One of those rare moments. Ask me anything. Who would you like to see on the show? That's important. We got, we got to get that. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, the incendiary device record. Um, I, they don't have the exact date. There is a pre there is a pre uh, pre order link that's going to be going up fairly soon. Uh, they're releasing the single, the song "Incendiary Device" along with the video, and there will be a pre order link for the self titled record. Um, Bob Mould Husker Du. That's a good one. I don't think I don't think that's ever been suggested before. That's interesting. Um, that's a good one. We'll add him to the list. I don't know if he'd want to come on a show like this and like talk like, you know, people sometimes feel like a hardcore, like I think he sort of left his hardcore, but I could be wrong. I don't know the dude, um, you know, so I could be wrong. Um, what else? What do you got? What do you got? Um, how about, I mean, I've said it before. Um, what else? Is that it? Favorite moment of the night at Bridge Nine. Hmm. You know what I think my favorite moment of the night was at Bridge Nine? Uh, seeing my friend Chris Wren uh, from Bridge Nine uh, watching H2O. And um, just 
him having a moment and uh, the, you know, it was a joyous occasion. And I know it's a band that uh, uh, means a lot to him and to Bridge Nine. And there was a moment there, we were, we were very close. We were watching them and, and uh, watching the band. The band was great. You know, H2, I haven't, see, I haven't seen, I haven't seen H2O in, you know, 20 something years. And Matt Henderson from Madball and Agnostic Front's playing second guitar now. And Toby's son is playing drums and he's great. I think that that might have been like my favorite moment. My moments are not about me anymore. I've had enough moments. My moments are about ha seeing other people have joy, you know. Um, Robert Hogg, of course. Um, can, I shout, can I have a shout out for my friend Gareth who passed away? Rest in peace, Gareth. Robert Hogg's friend. And thank you for all the great memories and special times you gave to our friend and supporter, Robert Hogg. Um, any Melvins peeps? No, we've never approached any, we've, we've never approached any, any Melvins about being on the show. Andy Frasco, who, Nikki, who's, I don't know who Andy Frasco is. Who's Andy Frasco? Yo, Toby's son was off the hook. Great drummer, really. You know who Toby's son reminded me of? Arthur Googie that used to drum for the Misfits. Uh, Googie was playing drums when I joined Antidote. And of course, he played on the iconic uh, seven inch thou shalt not kill. Toby's son, his posture, you know, kind of sits, sits straight up, was uh, reminding me of, of the Goog. Nuno from the Extreme. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, isn't it Nuno from Rih Rihanna now? Hasn't he played with, like, with Rihanna for like years and years? Um, yeah. There you go. Um, what else? Is there a, oh, are we closer to the 300, 300th show? Um, we're getting there a little bit. You know, we, we know who's on the wish, wish, list, wish, wish list, right? You know, Henry Rollins, Ian McKay, John Brandon from Negative Approach, Ice-T, you know, there's a couple other wild cards, but, you know, that's who we're, that's who we're going at, you know? That's who we're trying for. But, you know, it comes, I'm not sure what the date is yet. You know, I still have to, once we have the date, we're going to, we're going to go after a couple people, you know. Um, hey, Al, anyone from Born Against or Econochrist? Bands I loved way back. Not yet. Open to suggestions. Um, but keep in mind, one week from today, the return of the lunatic. Jack Risham, this is going to be great. That guy's a hoot. Um, Lori Dawn, shout out. Shout out to the women of Riot Squad Media for pulling off another amazing Camp Punksylvania last week. Yeah, it looks like uh, you guys had a great time. It was a great event. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's the shit. Look him up. I will look up Andy Frasco. Andy Frasco. Okay. Look him up. I'll do that on the drive home to New York tonight as I'm driving on the Merritt Parkway, texting and not paying attention to the road. That said, um, well, there you go. I think, uh, I thought, I think that brings our, our, our time together uh, at an end, my friends. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. It was nice talking to some people about their, their new releases. Um, and stuff that's coming out, we like to do that every once in a while. Um, hope I brought some joy into this world. You certainly bring joy into mine. Until the next time we meet, my friend, do good things and good things will come to you. From Bridge Nine Records.